For several years, we've had our holiday end of the year awards ceremony on our website. This year, we're bringing it to YouTube. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. So, somebody at Rackets and Runners watched too much of The Office at some point because our year-end awards are called the Rundies. Actually, who are we kidding? The Rundies is an awesome name, although it definitely works better for the whole runners part of Rackets and Runners. The Rundies are an award ceremony that we hold for each of our main sports, so tennis, running, and pickleball, and they allow us to crown the best product across a variety of different categories. Today, we're doing the tennis Rundies, so we're going to be talking about tennis rackets and tennis shoes. Yes, we're putting the two together, I just don't think it's worth doing separate videos. But of course, before we go on, remember that any of the products we talk about here, you can check out on our website, racketsandrunners.ca, and please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments section what you want me to cover next. Now, in order to be eligible for a Rundy, you must fulfill some criteria, the most important being the product must have been released in 2023. I emphasize released because there are some rackets with the 2023 label that were actually released in 2022. They're unfortunately not eligible. The second criteria, we'll be covering a lot of categories here, and in order to win that category, the product must be good at that specific thing, but it must also be a very good all-around performer. Finally, I just want to remind everyone that this is still my personal opinion. I try to be as objective as possible, but some bias will always come through, so try to remember that. It's been one of the best years for tennis releases, especially on the racket side of things, so the competition was high. So if your shoe or racket doesn't make the list, don't be sad, it's probably still very good. In fact, if you do disagree with anything I say, let me know in the comment section. I'm always down to have a little chat down there. Anyways, this video is going to be pretty long, so let's start handing out some awards, starting with the best tennis racket for spin. Okay, so you know how I just mentioned the product must have been released in 2023? Well, that's very important for this one because a certain yellow Babolat racket exists, but it came out in September of 2022, so the best spin racket for 2023 is the Wilson Shift 99. Honestly, Wilson has been absolutely killing it on the innovation side of things for the last few years, and the whole Shift line is the most recent proof of that. Traditionally, spin rackets have been certainly very spin friendly, but also sometimes wild, overly powerful, and usually lacking any sort of classic control. Wilson's goal with the Shift was to design a true spin racket, but have it be significantly better in all those areas, and they knocked it out of the park. They developed a new graphite layup which alters the vertical flex characteristic to increase string snapback without actually making the launch more inconsistent the way something like a spin grommet would. The result is a racket that is extremely spin friendly but with its constant beam, 16 by 20 string pattern and 99 square inch head also a racket that has way more precision than what we've come to be used to with spin rackets. It's an incredible racket, honestly, maybe even a better concept because there are still improvements that can be made mainly in the feel department, so I really can't wait to see what they do with the shift line in the future. I also just wanna say, the Rundi ceremony is not for handing out participation trophies, but I did just wanna give a little shout out to the Yonix V-Core 100. It's also a great spin racket, and the redesign was a breath of fresh air coming from the previous one, and it only missed out by a slim margin. Okay, we're going to move on to our first tennis shoe rundy, and we're starting with one of the most important categories, support and stability. At its core, a tennis shoe must be supportive and stable, so winning in this category means you're a pretty good shoe, and for 2023, that's without a doubt the A6 Cord FF3. Now this is the shoe that Djokovic helps design, and we've all seen the way he moves. That man covers more ground than anyone in history, so you know his shoe needs to hold up under stress. The Cord FF3 has rock solid stability during lateral cuts. The heel cup is reinforced like very few shoes I've ever tried, and the combination of the one-piece tongue with the full rubber encasing makes for an upper that has strictly zero rollover. The real beauty of this shoe is that yes, it's a true stability shoe, but it's not an uncomfortable and unmovable brick the way some of these shoes have been in the past. Asics's twist truss plastic shank in the outsole provides very impressive energy return, which helps make lateral movement more efficient. Then you've got the flight foam in the midsole, which provides a sensation of lightness you wouldn't expect from something so stable. Maybe not quite on the level of another shoe in its lineup, but more on that later. Okay, back to rackets now, and we're going to talk about something we don't talk about enough on this channel, and that's the best racket for comfort. I'm not going to lie, I don't struggle much with this comfort when I'm playing tennis, so it's not at the forefront of my mind when I'm reviewing, but I know how important this is to a lot of people, so I'll be talking about it more going into 2024. For now though, let's talk about the Head Gravity MP, the best racket for comfort in 2023. The Gravity MP weighs 295 grams, so it's light, it has a thin 22 millimeter beam and a soft 59 RA flex, and all those things help make a frame more comfortable. On top of that, the only major change that Head made coming from the previous one is that they added Auxetic, 
which makes the throw more flexible without taking away any stability, and that also helps with comfort. Basically, everything about this frame is comfortable, but it's the low static weight that pushes it beyond the rest for this award. Most thin beam soft rackets are comfortable, but they're usually heavy because they need that weight for stability. The problem is that weight can also increase strain on the muscles. The fact that Head has managed to keep the weight low, but still have great stability and flexibility is really quite remarkable. It's sort of like the Wilson Clash in that regard, but the Gravity MP is a much more well-rounded racket. Okay, we're going to stick with rackets here. This time we're handing out the Rundy for best racket for power, and this is going to be a controversial one, but I'm doubling down and going for the Yonex V-Core 98. Now, obviously the 98 isn't as powerful as the 100, so if we're talking about pure power, it wouldn't be number one, but this racket is so much more well-rounded that it has to take home the award. Anyways, all of the V-Cores became more powerful with this generation's redesign, but because the 98 is so much more consistent, it actually allows you to swing out with more confidence when you do want to go for big, powerful winners. Now, you might be thinking, okay, Luca, by that logic, wouldn't the 95 be even better than the 98? Then, no. There are diminishing returns here. The 98 kind of strikes the perfect balance between decent control, but still with a heavy emphasis on power. Okay, back to the shoes and back to comfort. Now, weirdly enough, I don't put a ton of value on comfort from my racket, but I do put a ton of value on it for my shoes. And in 2023, the Rundy for comfort goes to the New Balance CT Rally. Now, I don't like to generalize, and the proof of that is that I can talk about a racket's feel for 10 minutes without ever really repeating myself, at least I think. But generally, New Balance shoes are quite comfortable. Honestly, picking between the Rally and the 996 was difficult, but in the end, I think I made the right choice. One of the major reasons why New Balance shoes are so comfortable is because they put a heavy emphasis on developing soft and flexible uppers. The Rally evolved from the Lav V2 and the biggest improvement came in upper flexibility because all of the awkward stiffness you had when you flexed that shoe is completely gone on this one. Here, your foot lies in this mesh woven cocoon that feels more like a comfortable moccasin than what you would expect from a tennis shoe that also provides such good stability. On top of that, well, actually below that because we're gonna talk about the outsole now, but the outsole is super comfortable and that's what pushed it ahead of the 996 for me. It has a decent amount of give to it, which makes for a pretty plush ride, but it's still sturdy enough for hard court movement. Don't worry about that at all. This is not a GP turbo. Okay, we are getting close to the best of the year rundies, but let's stick to shoes for a bit. The best lightweight speed shoe of 2023 is the Nike Vapor Pro 2. Okay, 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 put the pitchforks down. I know this wasn't the most popular release because of how much people love the original Vapor Pro, but guys, this is a really good shoe. Believe me, just give it a chance. The only real similarity between the two is that they're both light, but in my humble opinion, this is a better overall shoe because it has a much more natural fitting upper, which makes it more comfortable and only takes away from a bit of its stability. I've been playing a lot with the previous Vapor Pro recently, and honestly, I prefer my Vapor Pro 2s. The shoe does just look so much better though. I know Alcaraz and Rune and Fritz and yeah, okay, a lot of players disagree, but these are very solid. Rublev is with me though, and we already know about his fantastic taste. Gee, I wonder why I have a Gravity Pro with me today. But anyways, speed shoes are not just about weight. The Vapor Pro 2 also has a low stack height, which makes for a very grounded feel and adds to that ultra responsive movement you want from this style of shoe. It's also a great shoe for sliding, which helps give it an element of speed because directional changes are so efficient. The outsole rubber is quite hard, so you can slide for a very long time, but also initiating and exiting the slide is very consistent, which is extremely important because you don't want any surprises when you're sliding. Honestly, everyone, I'm not a Nike fanboy or anything like that, but this is my favorite shoe right now. I know that's controversial, but it is what it is. You all knew this one was coming. We're handing out the Rundy for best racket for control in 2023, and it's none other than the Head Gravity Pro. I know I've said a lot of good things about this racket this year. Tell me honestly if you're getting sick of me talking about it, and I'll stop. Actually, I probably won't, but let me be brief here, and you can check out all the other videos if you want to know a little more. The Gravity Pro has an 18 by 20 string pattern, a 20 millimeter beam, and a super soft flex, so in terms of directional control, it's about as good as it gets. But then you look at the 100 square inch head size, and right away you get a little worried because that usually takes away from some control. Well, not here. The bigger head size somehow doesn't take away from any precision or control, and it adds an element of spin, power, and user friendliness that makes it such a more well-rounded racket than something like the Prestige. It is a true pro racket in that it is tough to swing still, but if you're an advanced player looking for control in a well-rounded package, this is about as good as it gets.
At first, I didn't want to include this Rundi because this video is going to be way too long, but I can't hold an award ceremony in 2023 without talking about this racket. So here it is. By far, the most improved racket of 2023 is the Yonex Percept 97. And no, the name may have changed, but this is the logical evolution of the V-Core Pro, so we're calling it most improved. The last V-Core Pro went too far away from Yonex's goal with this line because it was too mushy, a little undefined, and just didn't have a competitive control profile compared to the rest of the industry. Yonex made subtle but crucial changes, the most important being they removed vibration dampening mesh and replaced it with servo filter. At this point, we all know how I feel about VDM. It's way too muted, and that's okay in the E-Zone and the V-Core, but in your control racket, it hurts feel way too much, and the Percept is light years ahead of the last V-Core Pro in terms of feel. The racket is much more crisp and significantly more well-defined. Honestly, the Percept kind of saved Yonix's control line, and I could not be happier with it. The more I play with it, the more I like it. It's also worth noting that because it's more crisp, it's also a bit more spin-friendly, so it's right up there with the most well-rounded control racket and a solid contender for Racket of the Year. Thank you, Yonex, and it's time for Servo Filter and the rest of your line. We finally made it. We're handing out our first Best of the Year Rundi, and we're going to start with shoes. The best tennis shoe of 2023 is the Asics Gel Resolution 9. This was the easiest Rundi to hand out. It's been the case for a very long time now, but there's really no shoe that can compete with the all-around playability of the Gel Res. It really is elite in almost every category. Also, a little side note, there's this weird myth in the industry that the Gel Res is Asics' classic stability shoe, and that the Cord FF is their kind of hybrid speed and stability shoe. That's just not the case. The Gel Res at this point is the definition of all-around playability. The initial step in comfort is some of the best I've tried this year, but then when you take it out on the court, that's when it just wows you with how special it is. It really shouldn't be possible for a shoe to be this stable, this supportive, also provide such efficient energy return, and on top of all that, flex so naturally to the point where you pretty much forget you're wearing a tennis shoe. This is what happens when you make incremental changes from one model to the next, aimed at improving specific playability characteristics. On the 8, ASICS added the DynaWall sidewall, which totally revolutionized lateral push-off energy return, and on this one, it's the softer upper that has massively improved its overall comfort. Honestly, keep on cooking, ASICS. I know you know this is a winner, and I truly hope you never scrap it, and I trust you never will. Alright, we saved the best for last, we're going to crown the best tennis racket of the year, and this may surprise some of you, especially if you watched our best tennis rackets of the year from a couple months ago. The thing is, the more I play with this racket, the more I talk to coworkers and friends about it, the more I'm sold. The best racket of 2023 is the Babolat Pure Aero 98. Once in a while, a racket comes out that totally shakes up the industry. In the 90s, it was the Pro Tour 280, in the 2000s, it was the Aero Pro Drive, and now it very well could be the Pure Aero 98. Okay, there are rumors that Rune is switching away from it, but for now, there are two top 10 players that are going to be here for a very long time that are using this exact stick. The Aero 98 is special because it combines top tier playability from each category of spin, power, and control into a super polished, totally unique package that also complements the modern game perfectly. There are other rackets that are good at a lot of things, but none feel as solid, spin-friendly, and powerful as the Aero 98. The design itself just made a lot of sense, because adding the Aero Beam to a 98 makes for a crazy fast racket, but then it still holds up incredibly well on contact. Really, this is just the perfect racket for a modern player who plays with a ton of spin but still likes to go for big powerful shots which require a more solid string bed than what you'll get from something like an Aero 100. If you're that type of player, give this thing a shot. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. So that concludes our inaugural YouTube Rackets and Runners Rundies. And yes, I know the Gravity Pro didn't win Racket of the Year, you're as shocked as I am. We will have a Pickleball Rundies that comes out on the Pickleball channel if that interests any of you, but for now, that is going to be it from us today. Thank you so much for watching. Remember that if you want to check out any of these products, you can visit us in-store, or you can check them out online at racketsandrunners.ca.